you're looking for some straight up marketing advice that's super chilled and also a bit of a laugh, then grab yourself a drink and get ready for Marketing and Margaritas, a podcast that makes marketing entertaining. Brought to you by Rebel Nation, direct from regional Queensland. Hello and welcome to Marketing and Margaritas. Today, Jade and I are joined by David Tranter from Trantech Computers. I'm back. Yay! <laughs> Here's a sucker for punishment. He's back again. Um, <laughs> That's a really good way of putting that. <laughs> battery, battery loves us. Especially for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought we would just kind of have a polite, friendly argument slash discussion on marketing versus IT. And Excuse for you to rag on me. <laughs> That's what every podcast with you is. <laughs> it's not specific to this one. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, basically marketing and IT do overlap sometimes in our services. Yes. And so what we've done is compiled a list of topics that Tranter and I have not spoken about our opinions one way or another on them. <laughs> so it's, they will be a surprise. Other I reckon I would know some of yours. Uh-huh. Um, but basically we're going to discuss which service we think who is the better service provider to go through for it? Not as in Rebel versus Trantec, no. but as in marketing versus IT. Okay, sure. Well, it can be confusing for clients, so who, who to start with? So obviously, as a client, you'd potentially start with whoever you had the better relationship, but that's not necessarily going to be the best fit for all services. Yeah, and this isn't just an excuse for us to have a fight. It's actually, like, educational for people too. Yes, and we don't get upset if our clients use Trantec services for things that we could help with like we're all more than happy to share yes especially for the shitty ones <laughs> <laughs> all the awesome. shitty services can go straight to yeah, it yeah, sure, sure. they're not shitty services they're just Stuff less that appealing. i don't like doing <laughs> yeah. but like a good overall rule if it's fun it's marketing oh, if yeah, it's boring it's it. it it's not how i see it but sure. yeah. <laughs> let's roll with that I feel like that's perspective based yeah. all right so first off the list we have website development Tranto, who's better to go to for a website? Well, it depends on what type of website we're talking about, oh, right? Okay. So, because you're clearly going to think, oh, it's you. Well, marketing is definitely the answer. Oh, is that what I think? Interesting. Uh-huh. Am I wrong? <laughs> Come on. Okay. Uh, so, for the most part, marketing is where I would send web development stuff. We get asked all the time about websites and can we do them? The answer is no. I'm not interested. I don't want to know about it. So, I will push back to marketing. But then it depends on what type of site you're going for. Like, do you want, are you a real estate agent? and you want to build a database on there and have properties that are searchable because marketing might be able to do X, Y, and Z, but then the back-end stuff with the searching might not be the right answer and they might have to sort of go to more specialised and marketing can still engage in them people so you've still got a different type of IT person who's helping there. So it's more about functionality. Yeah, so I mean for the most part marketing have come a massive uh, leap forward in the last 10 years on what you guys have for tools that you can use. That was condescending. (laughs) (laughs) Wow, take it as you will. It's like you guys have evolved Mm. so much in the last 10 years. Congrats. Have a sook. So the, we fairly effective, the tools that you guys have these days are very different to what you had 10 years ago. So mm-hmm. say like a membership site or something like that, like you guys are well and truly capable of doing that. Whereas if I had said to a web designing company 10 years ago, hey, can you make a website to do a membership? They might have all of a sudden said, oh, no, we can do the art for it. We can do a layout, but no, you're going to have to get a developer. Because they weren't those ready-made platforms. Yeah, that's right. The platforms weren't there ready for them. And then you'd have to get something customized and yeah. the cost just sort of skyrocketed. So We do have access to a lot of tools now. Yeah, so the stuff that you guys can do these days is very different to 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, that marketing is can 100% do. But there's still some, like, as a site gets bigger and you're pulling in more and more volume, there's definitely a point where you're going to say, hey, we need a developer as well. So you still need marketing people. They're not going away, mm-hmm. but you're going to need IT developer people. Now, that's not me. I'm not an IT developer, but there are other people who, and marketing would pull them in because they have to work with marketing as well. So that's my perspective on that one. Okay. What do you think? Uh, side note, how long have you been working in IT? Uh, a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's over 10 years at Trantec. I did six years at Power Computers and I did the uni degree as well. So yeah, let's say 15, 16 years so officially. So your and experience, then, do you include your uni degree or do you take it from the time you graduated? No, I take it from the time I started working. I did the same, yeah. yeah. So it's probably yeah, 16 years that I've actually been working in IT. So, yeah. I know I was just working out mine this year, so I think I'm pretty sure mine's either 18 or 19 years this year that I've been working in marketing yep. because I started working in marketing during my degree. Okay. Mm. 
Sorry, that was a side note. Um, yeah, so I fundamentally pretty much agree with you on that one. So I think that um, a marketing agency would be the first port of call for a website development because you have your Marcoms people who would be site mapping and looking at your messaging and all that type of thing. We're one of those agencies that we have in-house web dev. So we actually have the IT development dude there that can do that coding and that research, whether it's, you know, CRM or other types of functionality and stuff. However, real estate is a really good example. We had one recently mm-hmm. where we've got a client who wants to do um, that thing where it's like, you know, they upload a property once and it spits it out to all the different platforms mm-hmm. and everything for them. That's not technology that we, like that we, like we've worked with people who have that technology, but we don't actually, that platform or whatever, but we don't do that tech ourselves. And in that instance, we help with the design and the development and the visual of it to keep it brand aligned for the client, but the service provider would help the yeah, functionality. Right. On the functionality side of things. So, but I would say that that would go to, like a developer in that space as opposed to an IT person. So like I think of IT services as like computers and tech and everything like that. So I guess to me it's like a little bit different from yours, but pretty much on the same page. So your guys are interesting in the fact that there's a couple of firms that have got developers on like yourselves, Mm -hmm. but there's also firms around that don't have developers. Oh, 100%. And there's, like, a whole bunch of, like, freelancers who are simply a Marcoms. Like, they're not even a design person. So, like, I know Mars comms people who build websites, which would be the equivalent of me. I see your face. (laughs) (laughs) It's, like, the equivalent of you or I building a website. Which, to be fair, I've built websites, but, like, they did not look good. (laughs) user-friendly interfaces out there, but it doesn't mean you should. That's it. Just because, like, the tools are simple doesn't mean you know how to fucking use them. Yes. So, yeah, mm. mostly agree, but also you're wrong partially. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's winning for Dave. That's what I heard, though. Yeah. So One point today. Let's score this, please. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Round two. We're still on website. So, website updates slash maintenance. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to guess that it's a similar answer depending on what we're updating and maintenance. So, my opinion on this is that actually either could probably do it depending on what the actual update or maintenance yeah. was. So, if you are looking to add a new page, um, or you wanted to give your site a refresh or something like that, you're probably going to go to the web, like to the marketing people because they're the ones that will write copy and all that sort of thing. That's not really an IT service. However, if you were potentially wanting to add like a particular calculator or something on there, then you might go to an IT developer type person or something instead. Again, we have web dev internally, so people could come to us if that was... But not everyone has that sort of thing. Yeah. I... I, I tend to probably want to push back to you guys. Like, I don't want to know about it. As, as IT, we want a website backup for our customers, so mm-hmm. we have some sort of contingency plan. I want to make sure their uh, plugins are all up to date and their website's up to date. Like, if they're using Squarespace, they're dealing with that, which is awesome. But if they're using WordPress or a different sort of platform like uh, Joomla, like, you want to make sure they're up to date. But <laughs> whoever built the site, I want them to look after that. I, as an IT person, I'm not really interested in that. If I was IT for a bigger company and that was, and I was their internal IT, IT, then I would take responsibility. Come under that umbrella. But for the most part, as an outsourced IT person, like we just want to literally make a website back up, maybe run them updates if we have to, but mm-hmm. I'd much rather push that off to marketing. Say, no, marketing, look after that. You pay a managed fee for them, and that's all on marketing then. Because then mm-hmm. there's no he said, she said blaming game. I hate blaming games. Yeah. yeah. I think, though, too, it's sort of like some companies will work with a, like marketing people in bits and pieces, but most of us generally have an IT provider who we work with consistently on a more ongoing basis like we have subscriptions and we you know, like that kind of thing True. so I think for me if I'm like well I'm only going to be engaging a marketing person every now and then but my IT provider bills me every month for XYZ services you know being able to package in the 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 technical side of things which is updates for plugins updates for themes and website backups I think IT could handle that I know you personally yep. don't fucking like that but let's just pretend it's not okay. all about you well, it's about me I'm here <laughs> talking about me so that's all well and good and IT can definitely do it but they need needs to be clearly communicated that's what the expectation is yeah. I think that's as, with any kind of service I know, man. but there's like, definitely an expectation oh they've got a website it's IT IT look after that I've never seen your website before and all of a sudden we're being responsible for looking after it like oh we get that from some... people as well where they're like oh why have 
haven't you told us this about our website? And it's like, because we've assigned ownership to you. Like, it's yeah. your website. Yeah. I haven't spoken to you in three years. I'm no longer responsible. Where it really comes back to that, like, if you've got a website, you're the person who's responsible for it. Not Agreed. IT, not marketing. It's yeah. you it's personally. Yours. It's your website. And then... Let's just okay. put that on a big fucking billboard somewhere. Yeah, and then... <laughs> I have to just your website is yours. And it's up to you to engage that. the right people. Right. Like, you can say, okay, like, you don't know the skill set there and what needs to be done because yeah. you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. So I totally get that as well. Like, I, and as a mechanic, I've got a website. It was built by Rebel for argument's sake. And now I want updates or changes done to it. I, like, sometimes people will just have the expectation you guys are doing it, mm. even though you've never said anything about it. But that's just their assumption that they've made. So mm. it's definitely worth, whether it's IT or marketing, communicating to the customers to say, hey, who is maintaining your website? Who does yeah. the responsible for updates? And, and that's client care, care, man. That's your aftercare sort of thing. Yeah. Because once a website goes live, that's not the end of it. When a website goes live, that is the first day. That is day dot. True. I think it's pretty traditional in this area of our industry that a website doesn't always get handed over to the client as their own True. property. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of marketing material doesn't, like, you know, the client doesn't get the working files for X, Y, Z. Like, that, that's an extra step. So I don't think it's quite seen as the norm in, in our area or in our industry just yet. So I can see where the confusion from the client would come in that Probably. realm. And that's, again, communicating clearly services and stuff, making sure, and, like, Again, you can say the same thing over and over to someone. It doesn't mean that they're listening or that they understand mm. you. But, like, you know, you've got to do your best to make sure that they're educated on what needs to be done once XYZ project is finished. Yeah, sure. So I guess, like, the takeaway there for me is if you're a customer who's got a website, find out who is actually man managing your website to do updates, and yeah. whether it is marketing, IT, or nobody's doing it because mm. no one could just be quite silly sitting there doing nothing. Yeah, it's like, you know, when you drive your car off the lot from, you know, buying a new car or whatever, you don't then just expect that the car lot is going to arrange your inspections for you. Like, yeah. you need to actually do that shit sort of thing, and people seem to forget that with the website is that, it, it, it is this. And it's because it's not something tangible that you can see and touch. It's it's different. Yeah. You can see it, I guess. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can touch it. Your hands on the screen. Mm, that's a nice <laughs> website. <laughs> that's a nice boulder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's next? <laughs> right. Next up the rank, we have website hosting. Now, Dave, you gave us another one and this confused me. Okay. We've got website hosting and website hosting renewal date. Mm -hmm. Why and do you have like, them as two different things? Yeah, she's like, what do you have these two different things? I'm like, I don't know. I asked Tranta and that's what he wanted. So okay, cool. explain yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just going to be me putting you on the spot. But like, damn. Okay, so we've picked up a client just recently. They have a number of websites and they're hosted by, created by different companies. Mm -hmm. They don't know when they're up for renewal mm -hmm. and they're saying, hey, uh, when are our websites up for renewal? I'm like, I don't know. I... We can tell you about your domain names because we tend to tend to take ownership on them. You can see a nice transparent date, but like where are them websites hosted? Yeah, it can be like following the breadcrumbs pretty much to figure out where that site is hosted and what it's up for renewal. Because some companies will have two bills for hosting and they pay both of them every year because no one's ever looked at it, especially as companies get larger yeah. and staff change. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> then they'll be like, well, this bill says hosting and this one comes six months later, it says hosting, it's from a different company. You could be paying for one that you don't even need anymore. So knowing where your website is yeah. uh, and then knowing for the host the renewal date is important. So I think it's important information for customers to know. And, and if, as marketing people, yeah. if you guys do it, like letting them know that, hey, it's a month away before your hosting comes up, we've got this site live. And that comes up to the ownership and the transparency that we just talked about with your actual website and your updates. Yeah, I guess it's knowing about the product that you own yeah. is really what it comes back to at the end of the day. And, like... But these guys I'm chatting about here, like they're more complicated. They're not just one single website. They've got five companies. There is seven different websites that feed into these companies. Yeah. And a couple of them companies have been acquired. So there's ones on the Gold Coast. There's ones here locally. There's ones from people who just don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. So figuring all that out as a customer is important. And that's where renewal dates, I care about renewal dates. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, right. a, a website goes down, then everybody's upset. Yeah. So and it might not go down because the domain name's expired. It's literally, I haven't paid for the hosting. So the block of wind is the easiest way to describe hosting. Because like you said, rent. while some people can accidentally be paying, like, hosting different places, it also can be that they get a bill and it says hosting. They're like, oh, I only paid hosting a couple of weeks ago. I don't need to pay this. And it's like, no, that's a different type of hosting. You still need to pay that one. Yeah, and that goes back to the previous podcast we did where we were trying to explain the difference between email hosting and website hosting and well, domain names and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. that's... Um, 
Yeah, it's 100 It can be confusing. There's no doubt about it. It definitely can be confusing on knowing yeah, which 100%. product to have. And that's where talking to your IT for a start, making a map, or talking to marketing and finding out where these digital products exist is important. So whose problem is it? Yours or ours? <laughs> it's, honestly, it's the customer problem. So you know, for, for website renewals, it really comes down to the customer and yep. them keeping track of their records. As an IT provider, we're always going to bill and keep them services online. We want to keep services online. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys are very much in the same boat. Like if a customer is not responding to you and hosting is coming up, it's probably a good chance you're harassing them to say, hey, your website's going to go down. Yeah, then they start to think, oh, this is a scam. This person won't leave me alone. And you're like, no, I really, I really want to make sure this doesn't die on you. I'm trying to look out for your best interest. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think it comes down to whoever, if I've got, if Trent, if, IT's got the hosting, and mm-hmm. they should really be harassing the company to look after it. If you, if marketing has the, com- the hosting, same thing. But it's good to remember, it wasn't IT, it wasn't marketing who built their website, it was a third-party vendor on yeah. the Gold Coast, let's say, for argument's sake, which happens a lot. They're gone, and they're not harassing, that site could go down, and it's not your marketing or IT person's fault. Like, at the end of the day, that comes back to customer responsibility and mm-hmm. knowing where your stuff is. Yeah. So as far as who to go to for that service of website hosting, which do you think is the best, so Ooh, marketing or IT? Definitely marketing, I don't want to know about it. Well, it's based on where. Trent, it just sounds like you just don't want to do any of this stuff. <laughs> no, it's a really recurring day. Is the day you went. Dave doesn't want to do anything. <laughs> no, um, well, if we've built the website, if built we've the website, chosen the platform. The website, yeah. You've got the platform. Like in, I believe Squarespace is your main platform of preference. True. Yep. So in which case, then it really, like you built the relationship onto customers in many cases. You guys aren't necessarily holding that relationship, Correct. right? So in which case... Like, like you know how my business works. It is, isn't it? So in which... And you're like not the only ones that do that. Most marketing firms around who use Squarespace within town do a similar sort of thing where they'll get the customer to pay that hosting directly. So at the end of the day, it's the customer who's responsible for it. Yeah. Okay, marketing set it up for you in the first place, but they literally build a house on the land that they, you're renting and it's now up to you to keep maintaining that rent. Yeah, and if your and rent is credit card expires or changes, that's all in your wheelhouse to yeah. update and manage. Right. Now you could say as a customer and go, look... I don't want that responsibility. I've got enough going on. I don't want to know about any of this. Marketing, can you please pay for this for me? You guys add a premium Mm -hmm. and then pay it for the customer. You're not going to let it go down then. You guys make money off it. But because that's not the way your business model works and you tend to be a lot more transparent on price, along with other firms in town who have got the same sort of model, then it really does come back to the customer. Yeah. So we do hosting, but usually just to get people out of pickles where the IT or their previous web one has disappeared. So WordPress websites in particular will like get companies to come to us and say, hey, can you guys take over the hosting? We can't contact our other guy or he's not responsive. It takes six months to get back to us. Mm. Then we'll pick them up and hold them for customers, make a backup and just try and keep them updates. But that's it's not something... To help out as a to only to help our like, customers. Yeah. It's not something we chase and I like, honestly, I cringe every time. I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this. I guess, I guess, <laughs> I guess. So, and then I suggest, hey, talk to marketing, get a new site built. If you put on a platform like Squarespace, then all them dramas and updates all go away because the platform manages it then. And if they've lost contact with their developer for six months plus or so, they're going to be soon up for a new website anyway. Things will be expiring, out of date, needing a refresh. So mm. they need that love. Yeah, but it's going back to that whole idea that your website isn't just a set and forget kind of yeah. thing. Like you need to keep updating it. It's where people find you. It's your front door of your business. And most businesses don't have that front storefront anymore they have the website yeah so even myself i know i'm guilty of i need to refresh our website again i change the every time we have staff change i try to keep that up to date Mm -hmm. but the rest of the site i'm not as good at keeping the whole site up to date i put little content here and there but we really should keep on that more than what we do we're just a shit trust me yeah like (laughs) but that comes down to i'm busy we don't need more work so So, is that you defending yourself as a client to us? We're no, going, no, uh, no, David, no. we need to do some updates. Right you know, <laughs> after this podcast, I'm going to get hit up. So, you have to do some. De- no, no, leave me alone. I don't want to. Yeah, I, I picked that up. <laughs> Should we actually make your website worse so, like, less no, people no, start coming just, over just to you? Just leave it alone. It's all good. It's all good. It's fine. So, I. 
I agree on that. So I think that, like, obviously, yes, where, for example, we do try to be transparent and everything, so I prefer people to actually own the things that they've paid for. So if they come to us to build a Squarespace website, then the actual hosting is through Squarespace. It's not through us. That is also my preferred yep. sort of setup. When it comes to using WordPress, so we have a WordPress developer who we work with. Um, I've known him for a gazillion two years and I went to his wedding and, you know, like we hang out as friends and stuff yeah, sort sure. of thing. So I feel very comfortable not only working with him and recommending him and because you know i i know that he's not going to ghost people which is a really common thing very common more common than i realized recently and um and just scary to think of too and he does hosting so when it comes to like wordpress websites we build with him i recommend to clients to get their hosting from him because i know he has his shit together yep. and he will make sure that they do like, he, you know, like if they just go get hosting themselves from Bluehost or whatever, and then they get this random reminder and they're like, who the fuck is Bluehost? And then they don't play the hosting and everything. Like, I know it is their responsibility and I totally get that. But at the same time, like we don't manage people's um, like, like the people we've given their website to them and they pay the hosting direct. If something comes up as a notification that their credit card details are wrong, or whatever, we will still just call them. Like, we'll still do that client care even though we're not being paid for it mm. because it's, like, again, no one wants someone's website to go down. No, and we don't want that angry person who, even though it had nothing to do with us... To have that bad experience. To have that bad experience. Oh, yeah, but, like, so. I think it's the thing, too. Like, I just think that there's certain things, like, you know, if the check oil light was coming onto my car all the time, I would probably just keep ignoring it until it broke down. <laughs> I think that's a bad example because I'm not sure your mechanic's going to call you. <laughs> I think many so, Jade, I've that. got this feeling. So what I mean, your check oil light on. When I, what I mean is that when you're in business, <laughs> yeah. that you've got all of these things that you've got to think about and figure out all of the time, and if something comes up that you don't actually really know that much about... I don't blame people. I just think it's easy to dismiss that stuff. So, yes, covering your own butt, but I think it's also just it's just looking out for them too. Yeah, you know what I mean? I think that client care side. Cool. All right, domain hostings. We're all about you having this one. Training. Yeah, so <laughs> this is an easy one for me. Domains, go to Trantech. <laughs> so we still have some domains, but, like, it's because of we've done that for clients before. Um, we, you know... It's a service we're transitioning out of. Yeah, basically, we're looking, like, for us, domains, I think, are best with someone who, um, like even though we would like can help people pick domains and find domains and point websites at domains and everything, to me, domains are more IT. Yeah. What do you think? I like domains. Um, <laughs> okay, so yeah, IT generally that will That means try you make money off domains. I know what that's my uh, instructor. Like, well, I make a whopping $10 <laughs> per year off a domain <laughs> as an average. So I'm not making crazy money from it, but I like to hold domains or IT like to hold domains security. because it, well, security is a great example, but it's more than that. It comes back down to control and oh, sorry, making that, sure that, that we can security, keep services like, online. Yeah. So take emails, for example. If your emails aren't working, nobody is happy in the slightest. It's just like your telephone line's being cut off um, so yeah, I kind of like when the phone goes down. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I don't think Trainer does because he no, has their phones. <laughs> not in the slightest. So for, for domain names, very much are your identity as a business. So IT is definitely where you should be holding them. Or if you want to hold them personally, that's fine. As long as you keep it up to date, you keep it secure of two factor to get into such things, and you make sure the details are up to date. Because if you've purchased a business from somebody else, and the registrant, so the person who registered it is the previous owner. So Bob Dole used to own the business, and now David owns the business. And Named of him. Bob Dole is my favourite pseudo name. Um, Bob Dole was like a president. Bob Dole, we vote for Bob Dole. Vote for Bob Dole. 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 Bob compose myself you know what you're saying uh, so on the domain front yeah so if you're looking up so you want to make sure them details are up to date so if you've got your own domain say you've got it with crazy domains or GoDaddy which is very common then making sure that the domain details are up to date it's got your email address on there uh, your phone number and your the registrant contact now when I say that it can't I really don't like having the same domain name as the registrant contact as what the domain name is take this example so your domain name expires 
you've forgotten how to get back into your crazy domain uh, website hosting thing, so you can reset it. That says reset password. I'm gonna reset my password to bobdoll at gmail.com. Oh, well, not gmail.com, bobdoll at businessname.com. <laughs> and oh, I can't get that because the domain is down. Um, so now I'm stuck in this vicious cycle where I'm stuck. I really, really, renew, really bad. I can't renew because I can't get in. My emails don't work because I haven't renewed. It's bad. It's all sorts of bad. It's happened before. So if you do have the domain name there, you want it to go to, I, I like going to Gmail accounts if you're personally holding it and making sure that Gmail accounts have got multi-factor on for that extra security. Also, you can pay for the who is bit of um, extra um, security where it doesn't tell you the details about it. So at the moment, I can publicly look up any domain name and find out who the registrant contact is and find out details about the business. So before I go to a business, I tend to look up who it happens to be. Now, when we talk, I am a stalker like that. <laughs> and all IT people generally are. They're trying to get pre info before they go there. So, Don't they can mark sort of... <laughs> <laughs> so I must have guessed you'd get answers like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. know. To those kind of common. questions. Very, so very common. Yeah, so having access to the domain name and having it as. I don't, I'm not fast if marketing hold it. As long as we can get access to the DNS when we need to, so we can make the changes. I do like holding it as IT because it means we can make sure the, the name servers are up to date when they move web developers from uh, Bob who used to build websites to Rebel and they go to change the details it's not going to take the email servers down because yeah. I've had that happen so many times where marketing people as a whole uh, within the industry don't understand that they change name servers and it will take emails down if the right records aren't updated again customers don't realize it I, I mean I remember 12 years ago I quite happily handed over the details for the name servers so they had the domain name and you change these records called name servers right so they're the things that this is where your email goes. Mm -hmm. And I quite happily handed it to a marketing firm. The marketing firm got their new website online. Customers like, my new website's on. This is great. Thank you very much, IT. And then about 10 minutes later, our emails don't work no. uh, because they haven't matched, the marketing hadn't matched the records there. And they're not to know. They're just trying to get their website online. So that's really why I like IT holding them details because IT will point the customers in the right direction to say, hey, you want a new website online? No worries. Send your marketing people to us. We'll find out what the records need to be. We'll get it online. It'll be seamless. Nothing else is going to break. And we're really happy to partner with a client's IT provider if when we are setting a website live, if they're wanting to hold on to that, that's not something that we stress about in the office. That's And that's, in coupling with the next one, that's the main reason why I prefer, because actually doing the domain part is not hard. Like registering a domain name for someone is not, is it's not a difficult job by any means. Where it gets complicated is when emails come into it, and so it's never happened to us. If I can knock on every piece of wood available, but I have heard and probably heard stories from you as well about people setting their websites live and then their emails going down. And you'll find in most cases, marketing do not have internal people that are actually across how all of that works. Yeah. So. Uh, to me, the best way of avoiding those issues altogether, and when I say security, it's security is in peace of mind, is that your domain and your email hosting to all be with your IT person, their experience, they know what to do with it, it's all together, so you don't have bits and pieces all over the place, but it also means that if anything was potentially going to go, like if you're putting a site live or, or doing anything, you know, partnering with them to, for them to keep an eye on it as well. And then, that, you know, if something was to go wrong, well, it shouldn't go wrong anyway if they're doing it properly, but it just means that it's like a safeguard for you as well sort of thing. So, yeah, I definitely prefer for us to not, i say touching the next one, I prefer domain and email hosting to be through an IT provider. Yeah, I, I think it's good advice as, as a whole. It's definitely something that makes life easier. IT definitely understand how websites work. They don't want to build them, but they want them to go live without affecting any other services. Mm -hmm. So look at that. We both agree on this. I know. We're just agreeing on everything. Domain I don't hosting like this podcast is, as much as I thought yeah, I would. 100%. I thought this would be a lot more fun. Uh -huh. We'll just pick on Trana a bit more. <laughs> okay. Done and done. <laughs> so domain hostings, Trana, you can have it. And email hostings, done. that's all yours too. Yeah, so email hosting... It definitely IT. I really like that of IT. Now, budget sites will often have uh, email hot. You get unlimited accounts when you get email hosting sometimes, uh, which is great for especially a startup business. However, they're not the same sort of type of email account. It's like having a nice Ferrari with IT uh, versus like this little pipe box. And that's that, why I like going back to that yeah. website hosting. That's why I like like our WordPress developer to actually do the hosting for clients because he's got, you know, like Australian servers and it's all like 
it's really strong and buff and all that sort of stuff or whatever so people's sites won't go down or there won't be issues if they've got extra functionality that something's gonna yeah, you know sure. go at a crucial moment or whatever so it's um yeah it's the same thing it's like people will buy like cheap domains or cheap emails or whatever and it's like well you get what you pay for as well yeah very much so. and again when you're starting out do you bootstrap strapping oh, like yeah. you definitely sometimes you know you're not going to afford the ferrari straight out the gate sort of thing 100%. but when you first at the same time once you're ready to change over it's not a massive expense in comparison and it's that peace of mind that security and everything is yeah definitely worth it yeah very much so i'm pro that if you're going out starting a business and you're really trying to save on the dollars like buying all them services yourself and trying your best to start do it in the first place that's Some fine do, man. however at some point there you're gonna have to go i really need professionals to look after this websites done by marketing it will hold domains and look after your emails and you're going to get a much better service so yeah great look at that again we just agree. Agree. Oh. yuck all right this might be contentious edm setup sorry email marketing direct marketing oh email marketing yeah right. what do you think <laughs> so i definitely think that this is a marketing thing so basically if you're setting up an active campaign a mailchimp a convert kit or whatever then your marketing person will be doing that as part of your marketing strategy and they should know how to set up your account so that it's optimized, integrate it with whatever things it needs to be integrated with, do your template design, do your email marketing strategy, set up your sequences, write your nurturing sequence copy, all that shit <laughs> should be by your marketing person. Oh, you know how I know this is marketing? Because I didn't know what the acronym EDM was. <laughs> I'm like, what's that one? I wish you explain the acronym. Yeah, so, uh, in short, I can help you set up a MailChimp account, but then it's hand over and I'm done. Good work. I fly up to IT. <laughs> Time for you guys. So I don't want to know about it. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I'd recommend there is security, like that multi-factor security. Yeah, I can't You're palm so that up. Boring no, that. I'm so boring. But if I, if I can get into your account and I can pretend to be you and it comes from an official email account because you would have validated it, mm -hmm. then now I can send to the entire customer base. So check your password and security on that. I know, I know. Dave, I, got, Dave, I got it in. Dave, I'm Dave taking it. to have two-factor on everything. I do. We do now have two-factor on everything. It is so fucking I annoying. Me and River. Security is a very about two factor universe. She's like, who wants a code? Literally, while we were just recording before, an Airtable code popped up on my phone, and I'm like, they know I'm in a recording session. Like, who's trying to get into Airtable? It is a nice app you can get. And now they're going to have to wait Listen. because I can't just stop this and be like, hold on, Trina, I've got to send this oh, no. off to blah blah. How dare I try to help you protect your data? <laughs> Thank and your you. I appreciate the apology. Right. You should be on the news right now. What, what is it? What's the day's breach? Uh, it's one of the finance companies. Oh, really? Mm. I haven't heard it. Massive data breach. Oh. Uh, another 14 million users. Excellent. Latitude. That's is that because they don't have two factor? That's well, not just because <laughs> they don't have two factor. But it probably does come down to them skimping out on IT security at some point because they were too focused on making monies. Yeah. Okay, well, IT security Sorry, is not on this list, but we know where that is. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we have no fucking qualms about where to send that bullshit to. All right, EDM is us, CRM setup. Um, look, I'd say this is a lot more specialised CRM setup. <clears throat> so a lot of the companies who set up CRMs will, like, that's all they do. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a general IT person or most IT companies aren't interested in it. Occasionally they'll want to get involved at certain levels. Like, again, where I want to pester them about making sure security is right. So we've done a rollout for a healthcare provider uh, at an aged care facility just recently, and I'm pestering. And they've got, it's all been done by the, um, by the provider itself, so who's the ones who are selling the CRM. Mm -hmm. But we've jumped in just to help them make sure the users know how to use it a little bit. So we're trying to be at the coal face a little bit mm -hmm. to help to support them and then make sure there is some basic security there as well that we're just double checking. So that they're, they're over well. IT Yeah, because we're going to be the ones yeah. that are called. Yeah. Like, so we're we're not necessarily going to know how to use their system in the slightest, but we still have to have some sort of basic knowledge about it. But I really, that's whoever's providing that CRM. And it could be IT. Like some larger IT companies, they sell CRM products mm -hmm. and they support them and all. That's not us. So, and I don't think any of the local firms are really pushing that as far as I'm aware. But it really comes down to who's providing that CRM service. Like, do you guys provide CRM service? No, so I agree that for an actual dedicated CRM, so obviously there are kind of CRM components to, like, for example, MailChimp, like you can segment your database and sure. things like that. But it can't do CRM in the sense that, you know, you can make notes on clients and all that kind of thing or whatever. So, or like those ones that you can filter through disk or whatever in the program and stuff or 
um, set yourself reminders. Okay, it's been two weeks since you sent this quote email, so now contact them. And you know, and sometimes project management it's integrated into. You know, there's all different ways. Yeah, sure. But I think I'm. A, I agree. Fuck. Damn it! Again, <laughs> is that CRM is generally like whoever's developed it. They most will often will have an onboarding process that does all your integration, etc. Um, and then I would bring marketing people in when it comes to how to um, strategically segment your audience. Yeah, okay, so because you can push that out is then customers. yeah, because that is then based on whatever your marketing goals and stuff like that. See, so like it, like I've got one at the moment I care about yeah. because their CRM they're feeding into a um, Google Drive and we want to move it to a SharePoint one so, yeah. we, so we can control security and know where that data happens to be. So IT or marketing have both got some sort of hand in there. But we're not the main oh, we're not things the, yeah, providers. That's right. Yeah, no, I, I and you could get an IT provider who is fully into it but and same with marketing. You might get one who specialises in it but... Nine times out of ten, thing. though, if you've got a marketing person that's specialising in it, like a lot of them are either like their affiliates or they're the sort of thing. You know what I mean? Which it's and not that you should, business. yeah, and it's not that you should steer away from affiliates because affiliates can be ex like product experts as mm. well. But at the same time, like an affiliate is obviously going to tell you that this is the best product for what you want. They're not going to look at this the realm of products available and go, well, based on your individual needs, this one is actually the one, yep. not the one that I sell. Yeah, the most times. Yep. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, whatever. All right, e email signatures. Ha <laughs> ha ha you go first. Uh, look, I know as IT, we set up email signatures on every new computer that we run up for customers, so we oh, set really? up an email account. Then one of the things we train all our guys to do, they set the email account off on someone's computer, is go to their certain items, copy their signature, and make sure it's set up. So when they're going to email, oh, it's right. already there. Yeah, yeah. If they don't have one for some reason, we will make a very basic block for them as well. But oh. outside of that, so I might use the Snippy tool. I love the Snippy tool on Windows. So I'll go to their website, Snip. Put that there along with something. Oh, yeah. I know, look at that. Oh, oh, and oh go, well, God. you know what that's better than? The my plain text God. that we're about to just have. And I'm sure you've seen some of them and not even noticed. Okay. I don't think we can be friends anymore. Oh, don't be like that. But ideally, you guys can deal with it. I don't want to know So it's really funny to say that. Um, so a finance institute that I deal with, um, they updated their email SIGs and they oh, and it was someone new emailing me and their email like their logo was a bit um uh, warped oh. in their email SIG and so I went to the owner and I was like hey I don't know if this person's legit I've never heard from them and their email SIG looks like shit he replies to me with the same shit email oh. SIG oh no and he's like ah oh, that's oh we just snipped this thing and I didn't realise the logo had been warped. <laughs> oh, no. Look, people can take it to extremes. I've got my own <laughs> staff. We've got a nice little email signature that we get done. And I've got my own staff. We're doing different formats on there. I'm like, what are you doing? Just follow the damn format for marketing. Just yeah. copy and paste. <laughs> I, just want that hard. I think it's, again, because emails, we send so many emails every day. I think that your email signature is actually a really key marketing tool. So for me, the actual setup, like the design, the strategy, whatever is going to be the key message, where it's going to point, all that sort of stuff. I think your email signature is a marketing thing to create. Yep. But as far as the rollout goes, fuck no, I do not like that shit. We give clients, so when we supply an email signature, we give them instructions on how to set it up on different platforms. But as soon as they're like, oh my God, it's not working on XYZ, I'm like, dude, um, potentially go to your IT person because I don't know how to... Like, if we've got someone in the team who has that particular phone or whatever and they can help, great. But, like, first person, me personally, I cannot troubleshoot email signatures. So I, I always recommend them to IT to actually mm. do the rollout. Yeah, okay. That's fine. I agree. We agree again. <laughs> Look at this agreement. Yeah, I don't, I don't like this. All right. What about SEO? I know what you're going to say. Ooh, what am I going to say? I think you're going to say you don't want anything to do with it ever, well, ever, ever. Why would I not want anything to do with SEO? I mean, it's just not black magic that <laughs> there's some way that it happens. 
Look. And see who's on uh, Black Magic. It might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> I've got 10 grand I want to spend on marketing, so get my website to number one. How am I going to do that? Well, we're going to try these strategies here, but that might not work because the algorithm could change and now none of that stuff works anymore. I feel like you're smack talking our business. Uh, <laughs> I'm smack talking your business. I'm smack talking SEO. <laughs> SEO is such a complex thing, and I wish there was a golden bullet where I could say, hey, this is the way to go here and I could help customers point them in the right direction, but I don't have it. Uh, I've got a couple of little strategies we use internally, which have worked well for us, but honestly, there is no magic bullet that yeah. I have in IT, and I don't know any other IT provider who is interested in offering SEO under their IT flag, unless they have a marketing firm. So definitely handballing this one across <laughs> to you. It's quite similar in the marketing realms though as well. Like there is no magic bullet for us either. Like it takes um, you know, a lot of trial and error and ongoing effort, all that type of thing. But at the same time, the ones who are able to get results very quickly and stuff, the like 99.9% .9 of the time will be using what we call black hat practices. Mm -hmm. So black hat SEO practices are the things that get you very good results in the short term and then fuck you over in the long term. But they don't care because they've already got the money and they've fucked off from that client. Yeah. So that's a, it's a really common thing that happens in our industry where people get scammed over from SEO and from SEO people or like marketing people for SEO and it's it's a complicated thing because it's expensive to do things ongoing and especially if you can't guarantee results and everything like as a service provider that feels like shit you know like you when you people pay you good money for something you really want to deliver the very best for them and it's not a place where you can guarantee that unless you do the wrong thing by them in the long term, which I can't, I can't do either. It's not so, a transparent service to offer. No, if you spend this, you will get this result. Like, yeah, so I just find it a really tricky one, and it's something that people can get fucked over really easily in all like providers. Yeah. So my biggest feedback on SEO is it takes time. Like mm. there's no doubt about it. Like you're looking at six yeah, months to you a do year the wrong thing and to then get it's quick to get to where you want to be consistently. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a magic bullet on it. Uh, yeah, so definitely marketing and it's definitely something that takes a lot of work. So like things that like, you could do that are easier is make sure your details are up to date, yeah. like on Google and Bing and any other local have search. Your and and stuff like, like, like it's some fundamental stuff, but there's lots of places that don't have the details up to date, even their address because they've moved at some point. Mm -hmm. So like looking at that kind of stuff. But again, marketing could do that kind of thing. It doesn't have to. It's definitely not an IT thing. We get dragged into it occasionally when we get asked about it, and I try very hard to, to back away. It makes me cringe. Yeah. I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> I feel like it kind of falls a little bit in the website updates, especially in the content realm, because the more content you're putting up and creating organically, the more your SEO is going to benefit from that. So that's in our realm. That's definitely a big part of it too, yeah, 100%. So, uh, 100% back to marketing, push to marketing, finding people who can help you with that. And but people who are going to be comes honest down to with budget. you, I think that's the biggest thing too. Like, and that's the thing. So, like, what I do with people is nine times out of ten, like, I will just actually. I've got a great article on SEO that I think breaks it down really simply that most people could understand, and a lot of the things on there people can do themselves, depending on their level of access to their website sure. or whatever. Um, so I send that to them where I'm like, these are the things you can be doing yourself. See how you go with this first. Yeah. You know, if you don't have the budget to hire someone to do it in a in a um, in a what do you call it, ethical, transparent way, then have a crack at these things yourself first. Because it's one of those things, you either got to spend time or money. If you don't have the money, spend the time. Mm. Don't spend cheap money on a cheap provider because a lot of, and not all of them, but a lot of them will just dick your site. And again, if you don't care, like if you're like, I don't care how my website's going to perform in three years or five years, then fine, go the cheap ass one now. Like, But lots of us, we generally start a business to be in it for the long haul and we do give a shit about how things are going to perform in three to five years' time. Yeah, so you're totally out of my realm of expertise. Just... Yeah. No, no, okay. <laughs> Phone messages and on-hold messages. Mm. So we set them up So because we provide phone systems, so we provide cloud phone systems. Uh, so we'll set up on-hold messages for people, and if they ask, then we can put them in contact with the right people. But outside of that, recording them, <laughs> I do have two guys in the office who have decent voices, so we call them the golden voices. Um, so, but then it's very, is. it's very confronting when I ring a business and <laughs> I hear my office junior who's answering the phone. There, it says plus one to talk to sales. <laughs> Press two to get the admin. I'm like, what business did I just call? Yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't call myself, did I? <laughs> uh, 
So, <laughs> so again, no, like definitely outsource it to marketing, get the right people to look after that kind of stuff. Uh, IT can definitely help put updates on there as required, and most IT and phone system providers are going to be very helpful there. They're going to bend over backwards to, to make sure you can use their, their platform nice mm-hmm. and easy. But, yeah, definitely a marketing one. I don't know about it. Yeah, I agree. I think of like those on hold messages, your after hour messages, those kind of thing as being marketing tools. Yep. So they're things where you can put key messages in, you want them to be brand aligned, you know, like they can help drive whatever your overall marketing goals are. So I see that part as the marketing side. Whereas the tech, what I would call the tech side of it would be like uploading yeah, shit. And, yeah. yeah, exactly. So again, we do the fun creative stuff and you can do the boring rollout shit. I guess that's where you want your marketing and IT to get along as well. Like, yeah, there's a few areas we cross over and need yeah. to work together. So. Like all of these. <laughs> the list I prepared earlier. I uh, know there's some that Dave doesn't want anything to do with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to partner on SEO? I mean, come on. Let's be friends. <laughs> all right, we got two more. So setting up a Metapixel. All right, firstly, Jade, What's explain a what a pixel is. <laughs> oh, there we go. It's, it's a nice one. Explain to Dave what a Metapixel is. So a Metapixel is a piece of code that you generate on the back end of your Facebook, Instagram, so like on in your Meta Business Suite. So Facebook, yeah, Facebook. Instagram. Facebook, yep. Yep. <laughs> He's like, I knew that one. <laughs> Facebook. Okay, yeah, cool. So a Facebook code, yep. Yeah, so you create a piece of code yes. and then you put that onto your website and so it allows them to talk to each other. I talking about tracking code from Facebook. Yes, yeah, so you can do okay. remarketing. So for analytics and all that manager. kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah, again, IT definitely don't want to know about that. <laughs> oh, man, it is so much fun. So it's like, say you launch a product and then, like, you know, a year later you're like, okay, we're going to put a sale onto it for Black Friday or whatever and you go, but I don't want this to go to absolutely everybody. Body, you can retarget it so that anyone who has visited that page and say like the last three months or something, they're the only ones who see that ad. Mm. It's so cool. Sounds nice and powerful. Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Well. Okay. So analytics. At the end of the we'll day, that it. comes down to a, 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 a type of analytics that you're putting. So tracking code you're putting on your site to help give you guys analytics for marketing. Well, it's about retargeting yes. more than analytics. Yes. Hundred percent. This this question is just stacked just for marketing. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> Look at the same with the next one. I feel like you've just tried at the end. You're like, oh, we're going to win this. <laughs> I should. Oh, yeah, I did yeah. tell you. I, mean, we we did. Did. I want to tell you. At the end, Josh, on the screen. I thought you were saying to tell you how many he got right. No, I don't know. I had a tally of, oh, yeah, we definitely should have All right, we'll do that in the show notes and on the social promotion for it. It's like a little tally. Rebel versus Trantec Communities. Okay. Google Analytics. Don't you guys do that? No. So we do it internally. I can do that. So we do it for our internal business. Yeah. Uh, so okay, I generally did think stuff. that that was no, like a fair one. I'm not really fussed about analytics in the slightest. Again, it comes down to marketing and traffic. The only reason IT would care about analytics for it the most part broken. is because the site is under too much load and we can see that no, load. But yeah, that's, I mean, like, I guess it has IT implications still. No, no, no. Okay. If it's wow. broken, Dave will fix it. If it's not safe, he will keep it secure. Outside of whatever the numbers like, say, I don't give a shit. Well, I guess. Like if I yeah, was hosting but it's such a, a web- basic technical thing to have. Ooh, that really hurts. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, Google Analytics. Like, have you been to the analytics page? Like, because it's, it's, it's not confronting at all. Like, you go there and you're like, holy crap, what am I doing? No it's way. Console. The new one is so dumbed mm-hmm. down. Beforehand, you could actually get some data. Now it's yeah. just like surface data. Okay. No, I think so. I totally agree. You definitely want analytics on your website so you can see statistics and all that kind of stuff. Because you log into yours all the time, right? I've been in there at least twice in the last year. (laughs) 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 But IT generally aren't going to be fussed about it unless they're caring about server load and the traffic, so what requirements are needed for hosting because the hosting is something more powerful. Like, but most websites we're looking after are, are websites that aren't getting thousands and thousands of users on the site so per know. day. Okay. So it's not I something genuinely that did not know that. I, I so, just sort of, because then, it's like a basic IT thing, I sort of thought that that would be like something you might tick off in your list of services. Uh, look, yeah, you could also put WordPress add-ins or use Squarespace or Wix or whatever platform you're using. They're giving analytics on traffic as well. Yeah, but not so, Google Analytics. Yeah, but they're still giving analytics that IT care about in the fact mm-hmm. that is a... Is this site going to be fast enough for the users? Can you do something for me then with right. your customers? Right. If they don't have Google Analytics, can you just suggest to them that they should? 
They don't even have to come to us. We're not that. I don't give a fuck where they go to. Yeah. Do it themselves. No. Like, they just suggest to them. I'll to suggest to the analytics to customers. Because However, I just see straight away, we're like, can you set that up for me? No, I don't want to set that up for you. It's really easy to set up. I mean, it, it, unless it goes wrong and then you have to troubleshoot it. But it, uh, Google can't start tracking information on your website until that piece of code is on there. So the sooner people get it yeah, on so there, the better. So even if you're like, I'm only going to small business, I don't, I don't care about that. analytics now. See, then that comes down but to like a website builder still though, right? So, like, you're building the website in the first place. Yeah, but like not everyone always... is good at that kind of stuff. And some people build their own websites, okay. but they might go to an IT person for domain and email. So I just think that maybe you should mention that. I will mention it to customers because it's a given in my world. Like, it, I straight away would think, like, if I've started a brand new business, then I need to make sure I'm listed on Google and Bing. So I would have that in the first place because that's a given, like, in my mind. So I don't think twice about it. Probably like, this is where I assume too much. I yeah. assume and make an ass of you and me, yeah. mainly me. So, but, like, no, because I don't want to build websites. I don't want to know about it. No, so no, I get it. Totally, totally, and totally I get marketing, you. but yes, I will pass that feedback on to my customer. So we had a client so the other day who um, they have been in business, I want to say like five or six years. So it's not new, but they're not like old, old sort of thing or whatever. And they had a WordPress website, which is, it's a little bit not my particular taste, but like it suits them and stuff. Like they like it or whatever. And then they're like, oh, we're just not ranking for search terms. And I'm like, that's weird because you have a really niche service. I'm like, oh, you know, there's some big names and whatever, so I can be see how it's quite competitive or whatever. Looked on the back end of their website, they didn't have Yoast set up. So Yoast is the industry standard SEO plugin for WordPress, <laughs> and it's you, there's a free version. It's and it's not hard. Like you literally just copy and paste information into it, and little green things come up telling you whether you how good green you know. It's good, yes. Yeah, it's so simple, and their developer had never put that on there, and it was just like. I've never seen that before. It's it was it was, don't I was know horrifying. What you don't know situation, unfortunately. And because they had paid someone to develop a website, yeah. and they were just like, I it's, thought they'd done the right yeah, thing. The site looks nice. And I was like, I would have thought they would have done the right thing too. It was yeah, really yeah, surprising. So I guess that's a bit where you're as marketing, assuming that's what developers are doing, and especially. I think we all make assumptions. Yeah, too. That's, that's right. what I'm getting at. I yeah. think that's a really common thing. Like I wouldn't be like, that's oh, I guess having, I shouldn't assume because I think we all do. Yeah, and that's where having a marketing team in place is going to be beneficial to you, right? Yeah. So, hmm, interesting. Hmm. Definitely a don't know what you don't know one. Yeah. Cool. That's a hard kettle of fish to fix, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, because I know, like, I always look for, is your business listed on Google? Do you have a Google page? Like, yeah. And it's and a given for me to have the code. And who don't do that too. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's a good extra service that you already well, offer. There's two to add to your list now, Dave. Metapixel mm. and Google Analytics. And both of them are free <laughs> things. Like, they're free things and people can do them themselves. Okay, okay, <laughs> Even if they're not okay. going to use it straight away, it's, like, oh really useful in the future. This, this is... <laughs> As always, it's an absolute pleasure having you. Thanks for coming along, Trina. <laughs> I still feel like it was stacked at the end. Aww. <laughs> Well, that's, that's fine. Thank you for having me. I do enjoy coming here crew. and arguing but with I you guys. I did add Google Analytics and I mm. thought that would be a... Anyway. Yep. Cool. Okay. Cool. I think we won, though. Mm, I think we definitely won. <laughs> well, and I had a feeling that we were going to agree on pretty much most of it. And that's why I thought that last one would be really good because I'm like, aha, debate. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was wanting a fight and I didn't get it. <laughs> it's like, what's a what? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, fantastic. Thanks, Trana, for Thank coming you. on. We do appreciate it. Go team. Thanks for having me. No worries. No worries. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for listening to this episode of Marketing and Margaritas. Find more free marketing tips, tricks and laughs at rebelnation.com.au.